Since Russia invaded Ukraine, Russian President Vladimir Putin has given orders to increase the alert level of Russia's nuclear forces and has made veiled nuclear threats. The blatant aggression against Ukraine has shocked Europe and the world. The Russian nuclear-powered space tug Zeus will be sent on a mission to search for life in deep space once completed. Dmitry Rogozin, the director general of the Russian state space agency Roscosmos, said on Tuesday. The space tug fitted with a nuclear reactor is set to be used for missions to remote planets of the solar system and beyond. It has been under development since 2010 and is expected to make its first space flight in 2030. The spacecraft's preliminary design is expected to be finished by July 2024 and will cost 4.2 billion rubles. The Russian nuclear-powered tug Zeus, which is equipped with a megawatt-class electric propulsion system, can be used to disable control systems of enemy spacecraft with an electromagnetic impulse and shoot laser beams. According to a paper of the Arsenal Design Bureau, part of Russia's Roscosmos. Zeus is a ship that will serve various purposes. On the one hand, it will serve as a defense system, and for this, it includes electronic weapons and lasers. But it will also be a cargo ship that will be able to move cargo to various destinations in space. And it will be equipped with a tracking system that will allow it to detect different space objects. A prototype of Zeus was first exhibited at the International Aviation and Space Salon MAX 2019. A 3D animation of its deployment in orbit was shown at the International Military Technical Forum Army 2020. Zeus is another sign that there is a new space race taking place, one in which, in addition to Russia, the United States and China participate. And now it's not just government agencies, but billionaires and private companies exploring the space on test flights, like what happened recently with Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin. Zeus is capable of hauling large cargo and astronauts, according to a state-owned news outlet, it may weigh 22 tons and produce 500 kilowatt energy. In the past, Russia launched over 30 reactors into space. Today, engineers from Roscosmos and the Russian Academy of Sciences are calculating how much cargo Zeus could carry. Possibly, Zeus will have power for over a decade. It'll travel faster in the cold void of space with nuclear power, where solar-powered vehicles would struggle. According to NASA, a nuclear-powered spacecraft could arrive on Mars in two years a year faster than with existing technologies. Because of the strong power, Russian experts want to use the Zeus to transport the nuclear power plant to the orbit of Mars, and then use the parachute to let the nuclear power plant reach the surface of Mars. After a stable landing, the nuclear power plant is activated to provide energy for the Mars base. China, which has spent $8.85 billion on its space agency, has more recently become a large player in the international space industry. The agency, which recently released images taken by its Mars Zurong rover, recently announced a collaboration with Russia to build an orbital lunar space station. That sets the two countries as direct rivals for NASA's Lunar Gateway program, which aims to build the lunar outpost by 2024. Today, we've ensured the development of space monitoring programs, and this is of practical significance for how to avoid dangerous collisions in space. But there's another, even more important task how to protect our planet from uninvited collisions with space bodies that can destroy the civilization," Rogozin said, noting that there so far exists no technology capable of diverting the trajectory of space objects approaching the Earth. The Global Space Exploration Conference GLEX, is an annual event that gathers representatives of scientific circles, governments, and industries since 2012. That trend refers to the idea that possessing nuclear weapons protects a nation from attack through the threat of overwhelming retaliation. This concept is widely credited for helping prevent war between the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. However, Russia's invasion of Ukraine casts a harsh light on its downsides. The most obvious is that Putin is using nuclear deterrence not to protect Russia, but rather to have his way in Ukraine. Russia's nuclear weapons deter the West from intervening with conventional military forces to defend Ukraine. Despite scattered calls in the U.S. for the creation of a no-fly zone over some or all of Ukraine, the Biden administration has widely resisted. In practice, this would mean shooting down Russian planes. It could lead to World War III. On the other side of the ledger, NATO's nuclear weapons presumably deter Russia from expanding the war to NATO countries, such as Poland, Romania, or the Baltic states. In over 65 years of space exploration, Russian cosmonauts have flown on American spacecraft, while astronauts from the US and other countries have relied on Russian spacecraft to access space. There is no indication that this mutually beneficial relationship will cease. 
Indeed, space cooperation has been an enduring hallmark of how countries can come together despite political differences and disagreements. Even at the height of the Cold War, the US and Soviet Union agreed to the 1963 Partial Test Ban Treaty, which prohibits the testing of nuclear weapons in outer space, and the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, which lays down fundamental principles for the exploration and use of space. Meanwhile, the US plans to place a nuclear power plant on the Moon by 2027 and eventually on Mars. If successful, the plant will provide power to establish outposts on the Moon or Mars. First, NASA's Anthony Calamino said the power system would be manufactured and assembled on Earth, then it would undergo safety testing. Finally, it would be readied for launch inside a lunar lander. According to the preliminary plans, the plan would use 10 kilowatts of electrical power for around 10 years. Notably, that would be the rough equivalent to the amount of energy needed to power 5 to 8 large households. Four units providing 10 kilowatts of electrical power each would provide enough power to establish an outpost on the Moon or Mars, said Calamino. The ability to produce large amounts of electrical power on planetary surfaces Using efficient surface power system would enable large-scale exploration, the establishment of human outposts, and utilization of in situ resources while allowing for the possibility of commercialization. The Zeus module will act as a mobile source of nuclear power for future spacecraft that may attempt to make longer journeys through space. Roscosmos has also signed a contract with Design Bureau Arsenal last year to develop a separate nuclear-powered space tug called Nuklon. According to TASS, similar nuclear technologies could also be used to power future satellites and orbital stations, according to Sputnik. Russia isn't the only country betting on nuclear energy in space. NASA is also working on a nuclear power plant to be established in deep space, more specifically on the surface of the Moon. However, the deeper the spacecraft goes into the solar system, the farther away it is from the Sun and the less solar energy is available. The batteries can be used for backup but some missions such as Cassini and Voyager are powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators RTGs, somewhat like nuclear batteries peat from the isotope's radioactive decay. RTGs are not nuclear reactors, but say chain reactions don't occur. The new Zeus project compares a complete nuclear reactor that will use a splitting reaction to drive rice. Between 1967 and 1988, the Soviet Union launched a large number of nuclear reactors in space during the Cold War as part of the Rorsat mission as a set of Soviet nuclear spy satellites. The United States, on the other hand, has launched only one, the SNAP-10A, or Snapshot, a nuclear reactor power system launched in 1965. Now that we've come to the end of this video, I want to thank you for sticking with me and I'd love to know what you think of it. Just comment down below also if you like this video. Please make sure you like it and stay safe. The video is over, but if you want to see more, there's one on your screen right now, and there are a few more fun videos coming soon. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care, stay safe, and be happy, guys.